Okay, uh, that's me. My job title is actually Chief Defender Against the Dark Arts. And here I am in a room filled with all of the dark arts. <laughs> um, You're welcome. <laughs> there you go. Yes, and thank you. I probably needed to plug something in this end. Okay. Okay, now, you know, I mean, I've been one of these people who've been talking about, writing about for our users, about password strengths, and I've just been naively using the term, you know, I, I just, okay. <laughs> I like that works. <laughs> yeah. It's the red thing. That's a hard thing working out for you. Hey. I think you need to see it. Yeah, it's good. I'm trying to get it. How is a mouse to figure out the Okay, um, so I thought, you know, I've been naively using the notion of just entropy, you know, classical, um, the, you know what? No, no, uh, scroll wheel, that is it. We, okay. Um, anyway, after, uh, after the introduction, I decided to just add a slide. Um, <laughs> fools rush in where angels fear to tread. I had no idea that this was going to be a controversial topic. I mean, I was a little curious that I didn't actually see a definition of password strength out there that was widely accepted. And I thought, well, I've got to come up with something. And some of the reasons is that we really do talk about, everyone here talks about some password being stronger than another. So intuitively, we all have this notion of at least relative password strength. Now sure, you can come up with contrived examples where it's the other way around in that case, but generally one of those is a lot stronger than the other. Um, and we'd like to be able to say things like one, two, three, four, five, that's terrible. That's the kind of thing an idiot would have on his luggage. Um, so, you know, we do say that some passwords are weak and some passwords are strong. Um, it's also convenient to be able to compare password strength to what you see in other to what you see in other parts of the system. Um, Here's something that I often have to explain to our users. Is, um, you know, should you really be worried about the difference in strength between 128-bit AES keys versus 256-bit AES keys if your password is just about 40 bits? So it's nice to be able to have some notion of the strength of passwords that you can compare with other parts of the system. Okay, um, uh, I realized, anyway, um, uh, there was no place for this slide, I just stuck it in here. Um, I'm going to talk about a uniform distribution, and that's basically just a random variable where each particular value is as likely as another. I expect you're all familiar with this, but added it in because I don't know it depends on it. Uh, the result of rolling a fair die, uniformly distributed one to six. Um, hopefully your AES keys, um, when they're generated by a, actually by a non-terrible name of number generator, um, passwords generated by a good uh, automatic uh, password generator, things that aren't, the sum of rolling pair of uh, 
a pair of dice, um, word frequencies in human language, and the passwords that people actually come up with in real life. Okay, uh, let me skip through that. Um, okay, so uh, sharing entropy, which is what I and a lot of people writing about passwords and password scripts talk about, is just the common fallback thing. And I knew it was wrong, but I didn't know how wrong it actually was um, until I had a nice discussion with Matt over there. <laughs> who, you know, tried to point me to how wrong it was. I said, no, 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 it's not really that wrong. And he said, well, read what I just pointed you, uh, pointed you to more carefully. And yeah, no, it turns out to be really wrong, but when it's good, when you have a uniform distribution, um, it actually works nicely. It's familiar, um, it's units and bits, uh, it's well understood, um, you know, so, uh, we can compare it to the strength of systems in other ways. Um, each bit represents, or should, when it works, a doubling in tracking times. Um, except, of course, this requires the passage to be distributed uniformly, and when it's bad, it's hard. Um, and again, I'm going to get a quote from Matt there. Uh, even with an accurate Shannon entropy value, it would not tell the defender anything about how vulnerable the system would be to an online password tracking attack. OK. Um, another notion that people have proposed is guessing entropy. And this is simply taking the average of um, the average of the number of guesses it takes to find uh, the particular passwords in the distribution, um, just using the formulation from Sarah uh, uh, um, And it's nice because it's kind of framed or talked about in terms of actual guessing, so that could have an appeal to you guys. Unfortunately, uh, well, one thing is it's not measured in bits, the number of guesses, it's easy to fix, uh, but it actually has the same problem as we have with, um, with entropy, with chain entropy, and I'll skip mean entropy. Um, okay. Uh, now, what we've got um, going on with chain entropy and all these other things is that they get bad when you have a distribution where one or just a small number of values from it are extremely common, but there's a lot of other possible values. So um, I'm going to construct an example to actually just work through um, these problems. And again, there's nothing original in what I'm saying here. Uh, it's just this helps indicate what we need to fix. Um, so imagine a distribution where nine times out of ten you pick one particular element, let's say it's password. And there are two to the 512 other elements um, that are all extremely unlikely. Um, simply one tenth. So one tenth of the time you pick one uniformly from these others. Um, I'm kind of a little sloppy in my language between talking about probability distributions versus random variables. Anyway, when we take that distribution, that contrived example, that head of distribution, Q, um, the Shannon entropy of it comes out to about 52 bits. The guessing entropy, which is number of guesses, not bits, comes out to about 2 to the 507, and I'm skipping the entropy. And that's where those things are calculated. Um, and I think that quite simply the lesson from this is that we just really can't get enough information by looking solely at the statistical properties of a distribution. Um, 
So uh, what we should look for is actual talk about passwords within a distribution instead of the distribution itself. Uh, and so this is like guessing entropy, except it's not an average of the elements within the distribution. It's what it's pretty much uh, how many guesses it takes to hit a given password uh, within the distribution. Um, and so this, oh, I renamed it gamma. Okay. So gamma is a function of three arguments the distribution the password is drawn from. You know, it's relevant how strong the thing is, the password itself, so where it sits in that distribution, um, and your target probability, your chance of actually hitting uh, this password um, after a certain number of guesses. And then very simple wrapping a definition of strength around that just to get the thing in bits and to work out so that um, so that when you do have a uniform distribution that this will give you the same results as the Shannon entropy. So uh, just the average number of guesses to have a 50% chance of finding the password W in the distribution. So this is the distribution of the attacker, not of the User. Ah, um, good question. Um, no, it's the distribution of the user. They will get to that. Uh, it's the actual, yeah. Um, okay, so what this gets us um, is a function, it's a function of both it. Anyway, it gets us that it kept, uses all that information, units are convenient. Um, we know what we mean when we say that some password is stronger than another, um, and it reflects how difficult it is to crack the password, kind of. Okay, and this is just repeating what those previous slides said. Uh, units are convenient, and particularly that when you have a uniform distribution, uh, it works out to be exactly the same as uh, Shannon entropy, these units that we use for this can be compared to other parts of the system. Um, it at least gives a meaning to say some password is stronger than another when they're drawn from the same distribution, and it also works when they're drawn from different distributions. Um, it reflects how difficult it is to crack the password. Well, kind of. Um, okay. Now, there are lots of things that this doesn't do. And maybe this is where the controversy was. I was never setting out to build a better password strength meter. You know, that's just a problem that is well beyond us. Um, so this definition does not help us build better password strength meters. Uh, it may be OK because it helps clarify uh, the problem with, uh, you know, with, it, it helps clarify what information you need that you don't have uh, to build a passive strength meter. Uh, then some comment about passive strength meters can actually be useful, um, even if they're wrong. Um, and this is all okay because I wasn't actually trying to build a better passive the example cue that I use to illustrate the problem with those other entities, and I just rushed through the chat because no one really wants to talk about that math. Um, this highly contrived. Uh, it's okay because this actually really does illustrate a real problem. And uh, they're also, um, okay. Um, uh, with various distributions um, do seem to be fat-headed when you actually look at passwords. Um, someone who couldn't make it here has an idea that 
the distribution of actual passwords follows the power law distribution. I've got one doubt, it's a different question. Um, okay. Uh, one of the problems is that this is that the definition that was used for that gamma was um, was the notion of a best algorithm. How many guesses it takes for the best algorithm for something to do. And that notion of best algorithm was simply guessing in order of likelihood from the distribution. But we've already seen with how hash hat operates with and other things is that it may be faster for hash cat or other similar tools to, to process, in a sense, groups of things together, maybe generated by one rule set or mass, um, even if they're out of order. Um, so this notion of best algorithm does not actually reflect uh, practical, real-world efficient tracking. Um, and I'm saying that this is all okay because I'm looking for an abstract mathematical definition that shouldn't be tied into uh, practical technology. Um, and now, uh, when you said, uh, someone asked the question of whether I'm talking about the distribution that the attacker knows or the distribution of what is actually coming out from people's heads as they make up passwords, Understanding brains is hard. Um, you know, it just is. Uh, um, however, we may be able to model, even if we don't know what's going into a decision in selecting passwords, uh, we may be able to model the actual distribution of passwords that people generate including techniques like the Markov chains. Um, and I'm just saying that this is okay because it gives me the opportunity to mention problems that I think are really cool. Um, I know that I rushed through this, but uh, um, I'm ready to take questions or expand on anything else in there. Yeah, um, I didn't fully understand some of the more uh, advanced mathematical you know, concepts and things, but I didn't really hear any discussion about measuring password strength against certain types of strings, such as password one, two, three, or you know those types of things. And is that outside of what entropy and, and those types of things can do, or is there a way to incorporate those concerns, those considerations, in with the types of concepts that you've, you've been addressing? Okay. Um, that's the problem with my use of mathematical symbols and notations instead of really uh, preparing this um, in a way that should be more appropriate for the audience. Um, things like Shannon entropy and guessing entropy don't care what the particular password is. They're only about the probability distribution. But uh, what I was saying is that we just can't define strength that way in a meaningful way. And so I threw in um, uh, so so when you so this is where you look at a string like password one within some distribution. So this K here is that. So so we're looking at the number of guesses it takes to find K, something like password one, <coughs> uh, within a distribution. So, so yeah, I had skipped over that. I used notation instead of actually helping out. So this definition of strength is looking at a password like password one with respect to a definition, uh, a distribution. Uh, I'd like to just read the tweet <laughs> from Marsh Ray. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> because I really like that one. The definition of password strength 
is literally defined in terms of the abilities of the people in this room. <laughs> so I was going to ask this question. I mean, if we have this idea of like an ideal guessing function, how do we measure how that differs from the actual guessing functions that are, you know, that are being developed here? Beats me. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but, so I'm saying is this is not, I, I'm, I don't think I'm doing anything radical here. Um, I actually think it's remarkably mundane, um, is that yes, it is this platonic, idealized guessing function, um, but it allows us to ask that question. So it puts us in a position where we can say, we, you know, we can't answer it because we don't know what the actual idealized guessing function is, but we can kind of well, if we knew this guessing function, we could choose a password outside of it. We could use this to, you know, pick different passwords so the guessing function would then have to change. Well, then you're talking about a different distribution. So, I mean, if you take something outside of X, then it's not that distribution. So, so we've got two things. We don't know the guessing function but it's really because we don't know what X is. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought I'm taking this thing and going to go to the other little conference that's following out on this one. Um, and I just kind of... Okay. Um, I don't know if that answered your question, but I'm afraid that's probably the best I'm going to be able to do. So I just thought of this. Um, so uh, there, uh, why don't we just ask the user how they created it, and then figure uh, basically like the rule engine uh, generator that. Uh, um, okay, no, I, about, yeah. Then figure out whether those were common rules, whether it was a common. Uh, base word and then go from there. I, I think that we can get a lot from that, like but I also don't trust people. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that they're insincere. Um, I don't trust people's ability to understand their own attempts at being random. Got it. If they don't know, just feel like it's crap. <laughs> So, except it isn't random, but they don't know. So, so the that economics is that you don't really ask people why they decided to make that purchase. You, you measure them who made purchases. If you ask someone, like, is that worth $5, you'll say yes or no, but you don't care. Because if you're not really measured, did they actually make that purchase or not? It's so not economists don't ever ask people that they treat people like apes or something. They don't have asking apes. It's like this sort of, they're the book they're the watching them. Right. So it's we not watching the apes to the master if you don't ask them. Yeah. Exactly, exactly what I wanted. And there is no doubt that this discussion is not over yet. And I would just say one more time, thank you for coming here and being a sponsor from, from Agile Bits. And the discussion will continue online. And I also hope that you will join us later today and, and the evening and maybe tomorrow as well. Uh, to do even more discussions on this and other subjects as well. So thank you. Yeah.